All right, here we go. Now let's go. So as we log on, let's talk about affirmations because trading the majority of your success is your mindset. And so tonight is BYOB Market Talks. Tonight is, yes, BYOB Market Talks. Tonight is about you. Tonight is advanced. Tuesday was basics. Tonight is advanced. Tonight, we're going to dive in where we really help you understand what's going on. However, you have to approach the charts with the right mindset. You have to approach the charts with the understanding that you're a winner. You have to approach the charts that, hey, I'm the greatest to ever do this. That's, I mean, that is one of my very first affirmations when I got started. I am the greatest to ever do this, right? And that's that note, I put it on the index card and I taped it because I couldn't find my sticky notes. But that is still on my computer. It is still on the computer. And so I want you to understand that you have to approach this with that understanding that you got this, right? That you understand this. You have to approach this from that understanding that you are, you, you are a winner, all right? And so that is why we do affirmations at the top of every single call, okay? Now, I, I wanna talk affirmations for a second. I am an educated, BYOB, Master Trader Anointed for Wealth. And I know some of you all copy and paste them and guess what, that's okay. But I still need you to put an energy behind it. So if you're copying and pasting, I'ma challenge you. I'ma challenge you, see you're all muted. Wanna, before you do it, I ask you what I'm asking you to do. I want to make sure that you're muted. You want to make sure you're muted because when you drop it, even if it's a copy and paste, I need you to speak it with boldness and confidence. I need you to drop it and I need you to speak it with boldness and confidence. I need you to speak what those affirmations are that you put in the chat. We're going to put some energy behind this thing. We're going to put some energy behind your success. We're going to make sure you're speaking it with boldness and confidence. I have my daughter do affirmations every morning, and I make her speak boldly and confidently. An affirmation is not, I'm going to be well, be master trader. No, an affirmation is, I am an educated BYOB master trader anointed for wealth. That is what an affirmation is. It embeds it in your brain that you will live up to this. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. You are absolutely correct. So I am an educated BYOB master trader anointed for wealth. I am the signal. All my trades in and profit, I am 777. And so we want to get in that habit, right, guys? We want to get in that mindset. We want to get in that thought process. We want to get in that energy. So when we sit down at these charts, right? And so I want you to know there's absolutely nothing wrong with your cutting and pasting. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to try to make you type it out every morning, but I do want to make you put some energy behind it. I do want to make sure that you are energizing your success. Okay. Because think about it. How are you when, you know, just think about it. How are you when you get upset? How much energy goes in that? When we get upset, when we get mad, how much energy is in that? How much energy is in that there is some energy, you know, you be like, oh, oh my goodness. And I'm and, and it was brought to my attention today. The reason why I saw me so passionately is because my grandma, uh, my grand, my granddaughter, I told you I'm all over right now, right? So my granddaughter did that tonight or this evening. My granddaughter did. She's three. She is three. And she's already. Ah, you, you, you know what? There's a lot of energy in copy and paste that it is not. But as a child, you know, you're already beginning to operate in that energy. And so, of course, you know, we had to have that three-year-old conversation about her energy and her patience and, you know, where she needed to shift it to. But the reality is, is I'm sharing this with you because we'll put energy in that. And you see it happens naturally. But yet, we won't put energy in what we want to manifest in our lives. So yes, your success, and like I said, you guys know, we talked about this on Tuesday about affirmations. We talked about this, right? We went in detail about this and we went in detail about your mindset. And then a talk with the finance doctor was about the mindset, chasing, you know, chasing the mindset. 
And so when we talked about that, now here we are. So we definitely want to make sure that you are operating in success. We want to make sure that you are operating in the right mindset. So I am an educated BYOB master trader anointed for wealth. I am the signal. All my trades in and profit, I am 777. And whatever else you want to make sure that you add to that, okay? So whatever else you want to make sure that you add to that, okay? And so I see you all logging in. I'm going to just give you all one big welcome, right? One, one big welcome to all you all who have dropped it in the chat since then. But I want to, if this is your first time here with us on BYOB Market Talks in the evening, you know, give me a one-on-one -on -one in the chat. And if you are still learning how to cash out, give me a two-two-two. Yes, I got a, the finance doctor's call on Tuesday. The lecture on Tuesday was very powerful. It absolutely was. Tuesday night was absolutely powerful. So welcome, welcome, and welcome back, everybody. Welcome, welcome, and welcome back. And so as we dive in tonight, you know, for those of you all joining us, I want to make sure that you all understand that, you know, how, what we do and why we do it. Be Your Own Bank is a movement. It's a powerful movement. It is an economic empowerment movement. As a matter of fact, it's the largest in the history of mankind. And so understanding that and understanding how we walk in that and how we walk in wealth and how we walk in that mindset, you know, understand it. I want you to understand that we believe that an educated trader is a profitable trader. So to facilitate your success, what we do is we have over 40 calls a month. So Monday through Thursday, 5 a.m. and 9 a.m., that's our profit calls. And then, of course, here we are on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights, we have our BYOB basics, right? And tonight is our advanced, okay? No call tomorrow. You're on your own tomorrow. No, I'm just playing. But, you know, this is what we do and why we do it. We want to facilitate your success. And the more you plug in, you are the signal. Do you understand the power behind the affirmation, I am the signal? Understand the power in the affirmation, I am the signal. You are the signal. You are the one that understands the market. You are the one that understands the charts. You are the one. And so I made a promise to you guys this morning that I was going to have something for you, you know, and hello, hello, I see you all. Hello, hello. So um, I made a promise that we were going to talk about a little before we dove into the charts that we were going to talk about a little bit about the news. So what we do know, right, is I'm going to go back and reset this one. That's what I didn't do. I, went, I did go find what I needed to find, but uh, that's not what I'm trying to do. So I did what I needed to do, but at the same time, okay, is this thing going to let me? Here we go. This recent and next. All right, here we go. So every time we sit down at the charts, we look at this, right? We, we come in and we look at what's happening. We come in and we see it. So, you know, tomorrow, right? And you see this at 10 o'clock, there is a red folder. So every single time we get in front of the charts, every single time we have to check the news. Now, why is that? Because I know half of you guys don't check the news, right? I know half of you guys don't check when you by yourself. I, I I already know that. So, you know, we we, we gonna pretend like um, you know, we we just gonna pretend like that doesn't happen. Cause we're gonna pretend like you guys do the right thing. But the reason behind that is fundamentals move the market. We do not trade. Yeah, I'm on EST. Yes, EST. You always wanna come in here and make sure, right? So I'm gonna set it automatically. So you always wanna come in here and make sure it's set to your time zone, all right? So you always wanna do that, it's pulling back up. But the thing is, is you wanna come in here and you wanna see, because we don't trade from a fundamental standpoint, but we understand that fundamentals move the market. We understand that fundamentals, right, move the market. And so you see, so yes, I'm Eastern Standard Time. So if you pull this up, you'll see, you can set it automatically and it'll pull it to your time zone. All right, because you know we're all on GMT, so you know that UTC time. So it'll pull it to where it's relevant to you. So when this pulls up, 
it'll show your time zone. So you see like this one says 1.30, that means it's 12.30 in Central. So that's what you all see. So it'll adjust it to your time zone to where you're looking at it. But I don't want you trying to trade the news. I'm not, I'm not advocating trading the news. And the reason why I'm highlighting that is we just saw NFP. We saw the market, right? When we picked the calls back up, we saw the market slow down, right? We saw the market slow down. And then NFP, you got, you know, now you all made money throughout the week, but you have, that. there's a thing that happens during these times to where if you're just happenstancing it, like I'm just going in and I'm not paying attention, there is going to be a difference in your trade account. I can, I can guarantee you that that there is going to be a difference if you're not paying attention. And that's why tonight we're gonna to do that top-down analysis that I promised you all, because I really want you guys to not compartmentalize how you analyze these charts. So, you know, as we do that, then of course, you know, the Monday and Tuesday, the market, like it was on nap, it was at like at nap time, right? And we were waiting on that, on, on, on the reports that came out on Wednesday. And that's that consumer report, that, right? And so when you understand that, you know, because I get this question all the time, well, how many trades do you take? How often do you trade? I, it's based on the market. Monday and Tuesday, I didn't even, you know, uh, we analyze the charts. We saw them not move. I didn't take any trades. But yet when Wednesday came, I had a very, very, very good day. So it's all dependent on the market. I do not believe in forcing a trade. I do not believe in forcing a trade at all. So the market is going to determine when I trade, fundamentals determine when you trade, fundamentals determine how much you can trade. So Monday and Tuesday, nothing, right? Now, I, some of you all drop 777s, seven, seven, but from, you know, but me personally, nothing. Wednesday, you know, very, took a few trades, right? Because the opportunity was there. I don't believe in forcing trades. And just like what we talked about this morning, right? When you really think about it, you have to have an expectation that your trades are going to end in profit, right? I have an expectation that my trades end in profit. And so when I sit down, so I don't get excited over that fact that I took profit because if that's when your success is going to come. I want you to understand that. If you get excited when you take profit, you are in the wrong mindset because you should be chasing the skill set. Are we here to make money? Absolutely. But you also go to work to make money. You go to work to get paid. And when you go to work to get paid, what happens? When you go to work, what happens? You know, the reality is, is you, you go up, you show up, you, you, you are there, but are you excited when you get paid? No, you have an expectation to get paid. I don't care how you feel about your job. That's not the point. The point is, is, I'm looking for my check. I showed up, now where's my check? That's how I feel about those charts. I don't get excited. I showed up, where's my check? This is my personal ATM. I expect when I put my BYOB master trader card in the market, my cash out card, that, no, when I put my BYOB, um, when I put my BYOB ATM card in the market, that when I put the cash out pin in, I expect to get paid. And that's the mindset that you have to have. And so, you, you have to be able to approach these charts from that because BYOB cash out is the pin number for your success. But your mindset is what's gonna pull you up to that ATM. That's how you're gonna get there, okay? So this is what I promise. I promise this. So this is once a year. So I'm just trying to help you guys understand the importance of what we're doing and what we're looking at. I want you to understand the importance of fundamentals. Because the reason why, right? Now, this is Jackson Hole. This actually only happens once a year. It only happens once a year. Every other report comes around maybe about, what, six to eight weeks um, monthly for NFP. We see the impact they have on the market. So here, in the month of August, this comes around once a year. These things are important to know. I know because I've been in your shoes before that most of the time when people are telling you about red folders, they want you to run. They're like, just don't touch it. Why? It's not don't touch it. It's don't, let's understand it. I'm, I'm not pushing a button, touch it, but I'm touching it. I want to know what it is. I want to know what's happening. I want to know why the market's moving around 
I want to know, right? That's what I am, the Federal Reserve of my family. Ha <laughs> ha! Now that's a powerful affirmation. That's powerful. So that's powerful because I'm going to tell you, you know, mindset, because most of the time, like when I was in the military, a lot of people will call me for money because they think because you're in the military, you're rich. And I would get agitated and frustrated, right? I would get agitated and frustrated. And so now, if I get that phone call, I don't get agitated and frustrated, right? Because I used to be like, I have a family. See, but that's the same thought I had too. I was like, I have a family, da, 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 you know? Now I don't get agitated and frustrated. Would I give or if I give or whatever is based on circumstance, right? However, God kind of shifted my thoughts on that and it's like, you in a position to be able to bless. You're in a position to be able to do. You're in a position to be able to pour. You know, you're in a different position now. So your mindset and your thought process, what are you mad for? You're walking in wealth. So what are you mad for, right? So it's a whole different because if you bless somebody, you're going to get blessed. You know, that's just how it works, right? So it's a whole different thought process and mentality. So I can't speak to what you were putting on. Like I can't speak to your feelings behind it. But when I read that, that's powerful. All right. That's a very powerful affirmation. And so you saw how like the Federal Reserve would just cat was just printing money, right? You know, oh y'all need a stimulus? Let me print some checks. So that's that's what I felt. That's the energy behind it. Like, oh, I'm gonna be able to bless. Let me just print some checks. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna be able to be a philanthropist. I'm a, that one made me try to say no words tonight. Y'all know I actually took some cough medicine. So that's what it is. So forgive me in advance. So, you know, this is um, what all it is. And so I want you to look at who's here. All right. I want you to look at who's here. So look at, look at who's here. Right. So you got central bankers, finance ministers, right? Look, everything. Look, financial market participants from around the world. How do y'all think that's gonna impact what we do? How do you think that's gonna impact the market, right? I told you, so I told you that you want to be able, right? You want to be able to, you being able to understand what moves the market. So the market might have some slow days, it might have some very profitable days in the midst of this, but at the same time, we know what's coming up. They're gonna have some discussions that we're not privy to. And out of those discussions are gonna be decisions and everything else that happens throughout the world, right? That's what's gonna happen, all right? So that's what's going on. So now any questions, comments, or testimonies? Questions, comments, or testimonies on, in, on this before I go to the charts? Because that's where we're headed. We're going to the charts. We got a top-down analysis approach that we have to get to. All right? So no questions, comments, or testimonies. I told you guys I was going to get it for you. I told you, I told you. So oh, when you're here and you see those red folders, open it up. Push the button. Not the, not the button in your MT4, the button on, on this button. So open it up see what's going on, right? See what's happening, find out. So you understand because I'm telling you now, that's gonna help you be able to understand what the market is doing and why it's doing what it's doing, okay? Now, here we are, GBP USD. So there I paused it, where my trigger go? I wrote it down so it doesn't matter. The thing undid it. So yeah, some of the stuff fell off. So. Is there a video on YouTube that explains? There is a video on YouTube that talks about um, that talks about news and the impact on the market. Um, there, there's a, a matter of fact in our Telegram chat, I just dropped it in there after we talked about it. So I believe to, was it Tuesday or earlier? If you just scroll up a little bit in the Telegram chat, you'll be able to see. You can go to the YouTube channel, if you're on the computer, you can search on the page. I know you can't search on the page on your phone, but you can search on a page, news, news, you know, and it'll pull up that 
training, but it's, I took it and I put it in the Telegram chat. So it's in there, all right? So GDP USD trigger for a sale. I wrote it down, okay? I wrote it down. So you're very welcome. Now, when these triggers happen, see GBP AUD just trigger for a buy. We have time, we'll come back and analyze this one too. So let me write it down just in case. All right, and that's on a five minute as well. And that's GBP AUD. Now, if we have time, we're gonna come back to it. But when you log on, okay, I want you guys to understand, most of the triggers are called on a five minute chart. All right, most of the triggers are caught on a five minute chart. How we've been doing this, and I'm gonna walk you through strategy first. I'm gonna walk you through strategy first, but I want you to understand something. How we've been doing it is, and, and how you guys compartmentalize it, but we've tried on this in the past, but we're bringing it back to your attention. How you've compartmentalized is, let me go analyze the strategy, time frame confluence, and then some of you guys don't check anything else. And then, you know, and we've been talking about market structure. We've been talking about understanding the charts. We've been talking about those things, but a lot of you all don't go back and check it. Or you don't go it, or you still learn the support and resistance lines, or you feel that you took 10 pips and you don't need to advance your skill set. You're done, right? I, I got this. I can just get my 10 pips and that's it. Well, there's a difference in gas money and not concerned about anything money, right? There's a difference in gas money and I can pay my bills. You're like, oh, pips pay my bills. There's a difference in that. And so that comes with skill set development. And so, yes, we start on a 15 minute chart. So I'm gonna go there, all right, before we even do this analysis. So we start on a 15 minute chart. And starting on a 15 minute chart, what we see, and we're gonna do this live trade. Okay, we're not even going to a historical trade. We're going to do this live trade. And I'm going to walk you through the steps. Now, I'll start here on a 15-minute chart because, hold on. All right. So we start here on a 15-minute chart. Yes, big bank frequency. That's what it is. Yeah, so that's it. That's really what it is. There's a difference between gas money and big bank frequency. Absolutely. It's a huge difference between gas money and big bank frequency. So here I can begin to understand because if I bring you up here first, if we start here, it's going to take you a while to start grasping this, to be honest, right? It's, it's, it's just going to take you a while. And you know, is you're gonna have to learn support and resistance. You're going to have to learn market structure. You're going to have to learn trend lines. You're going to have to learn all of that. And you're looking at this and it looked like an EKG. I remember the first time I heard that from a young lady, um, you know, probably about two years ago. So you, you want to make sure, you know, and she was just like, wait, what? But after a while she looked at it and she was, Seven 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 all day long, right? But the realis, the reality, um, the reality is, is I can start down here on a fifteen minute chart. I can begin to take profit. I can begin to understand, but my learning should never stop. My learning should never ever ever stop. So now, right here, what we're looking at is, you know, what we're looking at okay is this blue line cross over the red so here on a 15 minute chart okay what we're looking for is the blue line cross over the red and a downward momentum all right blue line cross over the red and downward momentum around the 80 and then of course we're going to be looking for a red candle with a flat top all right red candle with a flat top so that's what we're looking for and then a PSR. Now, what we already know, this has been in a strong sale. So if you were on this morning's call, can I get a 777? Can I get a 777 to you on this morning's call? Can I get my 777? Because then I tell you guys to take that you are going to take this trade. There we go. There they go. Because there's no reason why you shouldn't have took profit. It's absolutely, look, I look there, I love it. There's absolutely no reason why you didn't take profit after we analyzed that this morning. And 
you know, it's, you, you should have been very profitable today. So, but what we know, so when I'm down here, I can't see the market structure, right? When I'm down here, I have absolutely no idea what the market structure looks like, right? When I'm down there, I, I have, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Hold on, yeah, somebody, y'all keep your mics muted for the, you know, we wanna make sure, you know, that, well, let's just make sure we keep our mics muted. So if I'm down here, I have absolutely no idea what's happening in the big grand scheme of things, but I do see a blue line cross over the red and the downward momentum. I do see a red candle with a flat top and I do see a piece. So as a matter of fact, it just triggered again. And let's see, 1.38070. All right. And that's on a five minute as well. So I'm gonna put them both on here. All right. I'm a, well, you know, we're gonna check the hour and then we're gonna drop down. And that's a very solid setup. Now, when I come to my hour, then I'm gonna put them both on there. All right. When I come to my hour, right, this Look at my stochastic starting to get that curve back down, but it's not really down, but it's starting. You see how it came up and how it's starting to come down. Now look at my candle. So we know it's starting, keyword starting, not doing, starting and doing is two different things. Now I'm gonna drop down, okay, to my five minute. And my five minute, look what my five minute is doing right now. So this is what caused this trigger. This pulling back up is what call this trigger. So I'm glad this happened. So that's the strategy. You do 10 pips and cash out or trade to your first support and resistance line. But I want to walk through here. I'm glad that happened. So we can talk about that. So because I get a lot of questions and I want you to understand that when you get this trigger, how you can jump up to the top or you can jump up, right? I want you to understand how this works. So this just triggered. Let's put that on there. All right, let's, let's put that line. Okay, and for those of you all who don't know why I changed it, blue is our psychological levels. We're gonna keep be consistent with that. So 138070, that's where this trigger, okay? This trigger happened because this is pulling back, right? This is what triggers your lower time frames, okay? Are your lower time frames are where you take your entries at. Your lower time frames is how you see all the activity in the market. One of the things that we tend to do, right? One of the things that we tend to do is, because I get it, right? Can I trade on an hour? Can I trade on a four hour? Can I trade? It's not about taking a trade on a time frame. It's about understanding how the time frames work together, okay? That trigger is going to come off of the five minute most of the time because you can see the lower time frames is where all the activity happens, right? That's where all the activity happens in the market. So this is where that trigger happened. If I check my confluence, when that trigger happened, because we just got this. So this, it happened here. So it's a very, very valid. I mean, it's literally 930 right now. So this is a new 30 minute candle, but you know, the trigger, was five minutes ago. So that's a very valid trigger. But look at my stochastic. I do not have alignment with my stochastic and my candle. You see that? My candle's in a sale, my stochastic's in a buy. My leading indicator is my stochastic. So, but however, I'm not, if, even if it wasn't, stochastic buying, candle selling, not confluent on the time frame. I need them to be on the same sheet of music. Like when this was buying and this was buying, I'm good, okay? So that's confluence, right? It's confluent. Confluent simply means alignment. So this is in a buy, this is in a sale, all right? So now when we come down here, because both of them triggered for a sale, right? Even when we were looking at this, right? This had a flat top. This had, you know, this was red. And that's why I said uh, going, not there, but look like we're going. So if you pretend like this one was selling, now you see a wick is kind of coming on this 15. If you do your time frame confluence, if you look at the market, if you see that, then you're going to understand that 
when I get that flat top and everything is alignment, I'm not getting a wig. This happened because of all of this that's happening now, right? This happened because what we're seeing here. And guys, as we go through this, I'm trying to go slow and at a certain pace. But if you have questions, comments, testimonies, need me to pause, go back, rewind, whatever. Because if we got to do this in two parts, we'll do it in two parts. But I want to make sure you grasp this information because I'm trying to help you understand how you can take a trigger and you grab the big picture. So both of the triggers were around the same area. So I'm, there's no really no need to drop them both on there. But what I wanna do is I told you, I'm gonna bring you from the top down analysis first before we even analyze a strategy, okay? So I'm gonna take you to the top down and then, you know, we're gonna go. This is great sample because it's mostly the market anytime you're looking for entry. Okay, good, good, good. So let's look at it. This trigger, I dropped it on here. This is the trigger, I dropped it on here, right? This trigger, and I dropped it on here. So I'm gonna come up here to my higher time frame first. Let's do our top down analysis first, okay? Let's do our top down analysis. Now, when you go to do a top down analysis, I need to squinch the charts up. So I said squinch, I know, but I need to squinch the charts up. Somebody, anybody drop it in the chat, and tell me what you see. I want to know what you see, because you need to see what I see. Anybody? YouTube, Facebook. Um, okay, you see a downtrend. Zoom. You see a sale. What else do you guys see? Let's let's go from there. Do you definitely see that? Let's go from there. What else do you see? Almost oversold, all right? What else do you see? Major support, absolutely. You guys are on top of it. So, exactly, you guys are on top of it. So now, what I'm looking at on this trigger, okay? Well, I'm not even looking at that right now. Let me move, let me move. I didn't mean to click that, I moved that. So, you, you might be zoomed in further than me, right? You might be zoomed in a little bit more than I am. Because I'm not even look, looking, but yes, it is a rejection area because it's a strong support line. But as far as if, let me zoom in and see, because this, this might be where you are. So it is getting rejected. So definitely. So everybody is correct. Everybody. So when I'm looking right here, all right, you can see how the market is responding to this trigger line, right? And let me go ahead and put it back because I moved it. Because I and I'm now being so specific on the number is really not that important. But the reason why I'm doing it on this call is because I want you guys to see it. So now look at how look at where the market reacted. The market reacted here. Look at how the market is reacted right here. Look at how the market reacted here. It kind of reacted here too, but that looks like impulse, correction, continuation, correction, continuation, correction, continuation, right? That one's just beautiful. So look at how the market is reacting around these zones, right? You see how the market's reacting around these zones? That's ultimately what I'm looking for, okay? So you can take that trigger, all right? We can take that trigger, now, we already know why it triggered for a sale. Very valid trigger. But now I'm coming up here and I'm looking at my higher time frame. So this is that top-down analysis, all right? So now we know we're oversold. My four-hour, new four-hour, and that is getting rejected. So somebody's already identified that it's getting rejected. It's absolutely getting rejected. See, this is what you guys also have to understand. When I'm looking at the chart like this, I don't know where I'm at in the market. So you have to look at the market to know where you are in the market, right? I have to look at the market itself to know where I'm at in the market. That's going to impact if you and when you can take a trade, okay? So I'm gonna put psychological levels on here, but not yet, right? I'm gonna walk you guys through this. So I'm oversold here. When I come down to my hour, right? Now you see more of the rejection, right? 
You see how it tapped on this line? It pulled up and now look at what it's doing. My stochastic pulled up and now look what my stochastic doing. So it looked like it's trying to break through there, but we're already oversold. So what we're doing, we're not analyzing the strategy yet. We're analyzing the market. We're looking at the market itself. Is this trade even worth analyzing and taking? So knowing that I'm oversold, knowing that I'm oversold, right? Knowing that, let's see, where are we at? That's 37, that's 39, and where is 38? Let's, let's get my level. Let's change this to blue. Let's get my level, right? I told you we was gonna be building on top of everything. Right, now where are we at? Sitting on a what? We're sitting on a what? We sitting on a what? I'm gonna pause to somebody else. Not just a support, we sitting on a what? It is a support line, but it's a psychological level, right? We're sitting on the psychological level. Psychological levels are support and resistance lines, but they are very impactful support and resistance lines, right? If you didn't watch that training, go back and watch the training. It was, we went very in detail so you guys could understand it. So now you see how the market is reacting around here, all right? And so it's not worth a sale just yet, right? So, but let's see if it's even worth a trade, all right? So now when I come to my hour, you can see how it's reacting. We already saw that. So now when I come down here, okay? When I come down here, because what we're looking at is live, this is where we, most of us live on that 15 minute chart. So I've gone from my hour to my four hour down to the 15. And so what you see is that pullback, you see where it came and it hit on that level where that trigger happened. And now look at what's happening. Now, most of the time, 99% of the time, these triggers are called in a correction, right? Triggers called in a correction. That's 99% of the time, right? And so, but, so you just have to be able to take this trigger and understand where you are in the market, okay? Questions, comments, testimony so far. Questions, comments, testimony so far. All right, no questions, comments, testimonies. You guys with me? Will you with me? It's the last call of this week. The last call of this week. All right, you're with me. I love y'all. So now what you're seeing is where we are sitting on top of the market. So now, right, you look at where we are. I drop down and I can see what's going on. So what I'm gonna do, because what, you, what we're doing is live. And I want this to make more sense to you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to an area that's already played out, okay? We're gonna come to an area that's already played out. We're going to pretend that we got a trigger up here. So this is a psychological level, all right? I'm gonna put it on here. And we're gonna pretend for this sale that we got a um, trigger. We did this morning. You know, we got some this morning, but I, of course I didn't write it out. So we're gonna look at that. Now, now when we look at this, okay, this is where I'm at on a higher time frame. So we probably would have got a trigger uh, somewhere around up in this area, right? That's the sixth. So today, right, it was somewhere up in this area because like I said, it's the four hours. So we know that today it was somewhere around here, okay? This is around where that trigger was. So I'm gonna actually drop both of these lines because we know that it happens somewhere around here. So, but, and it's always triggered on the support and resistance line. So, and now you, now you see this morning, we got it up in this area, okay? It might've been more like right around here because we're on a four hour chart, you know, cause I'm looking at the date at the bottom. So it might've been somewhere more around here, but you know, for the sake of simplicity of training, I'm gonna leave it right here and right here. And then you see, this is also a trigger right here. So that's three different triggers that happened with GBPUSD 
that pull from here, all right? Three different triggers. So now, right, as you can see this, right, you can kind of see that. So now I'm gonna drop down. So we're gonna focus on this area right here and we're gonna focus on this area right here because we're already analyzing down here, all right? So I'm gonna go to the very first red candle, pull this over to the very first red candle and you can kind of see where these triggers, the arrows are really just to kind of show you where we are, right? Like where are we at in the market? So now I'll come down to my hour, all right? You see the setup, okay? You see the setup. So what we did first, step one is 15 minute chart, be wild, be cash out strategy. Step two is time frame confluence. Step three is top down analysis approach. What we've done is top down analysis approach. Because remember, I'm telling you, it's not about can I trade on an hour? Can I trade on a four hour? Can I take a trade on a 15? It's about understanding how the time frames work together for one successful trade. The 15, right? The 15 is where we start from because you have to build a foundation, right? You have to build a foundation and be able to get in the market knowing what to look for because you're still learning your support and resistance. You're still learning, you know, you're still learning sub, um, market structure. You're still learning all of these things, but you can take a few pips and push that button and walk away with some money, you know, but you never stop learning. So if the overall picture is in a sale and the current picture is in a buy, can you explain how is the current picture in a buy? The current picture is not in a buy. What it happened, you're talking about down here, correct? Because what happened is the market has been selling. And I'm getting to that point. You know, as we analyze the needs, the market has been selling. We've gotten triggers all day, really all week at these different areas. And now you get another one right here. That's the vibrata scans the market for high probability trades. The vibrata scans the market and it has a certain formula or a certain pat thing that it's looking for to where it scans the market and it identifies it, but it can't see the market, if that makes sense. This is, this is a computer program. So it scans the market, but it can't see the market. So it doesn't know to say, oh, I'm not going to send this because I'm sitting on a psychological level. All it knows is... If X does this and this does that and this did that, then this. That's what it knows, right? That's what the vibrato knows. So it doesn't know or maybe possibly support and resistance or maybe possibly that it, just, it knows if this, then that, then this equals that. You know, if this, then that, then I send a, I send a trigger, right? That's what the vibrato knows. And so... If this, then that equals that happened here, it happened here, and it happened here. So that's what the vibrata is doing, and that's why it's on a lower time frame, right? So these are not signals. And a lot of people look at this and it's like, well, this didn't match up, and this doesn't do this, and this didn't do that. It's not a signal. You just got to analyze the chart. You have to analyze that trade. So it's here, it's here, and it's here, right? Triggers all week. Now, if I'm looking here, okay, four hour, four hour, drop down to the hour, okay? What do I see? I see the market, let's, let's zoom in right here, right? So this is where we start on a four hour. You can see that this had a blue line cross over the red, one hour, blue line cross over the red and the downward momentum, red candle flat, flat top, PSR flip. Look at all these hours, I didn't have a PSR. I had one flat top, but look at all these hours that I didn't have a piece are, right? Bam, bam, let's go right there. So this is where the alignment came, right? On the hour. Now, quite sure we had some trading opportunities on a 15 minute chart, but we're not on that yet. We're talking the top down analysis. So if I look here on my hour, you can kind of see where that alignment happened right there within that four hour window time frame. I'm still. Uh, you saw me move the arrow on a one hour, but on a four hour, I'm in the same place, right? So when I drop down to my 15, look what's happening on my 15. So basically, all these trades really never had confluence. 
right? All of these trades, remember we're talking about the consolidation? Where does consolidation happen? You know, 38.5 is that midpoint, but it happens around levels, right? So, but we're sitting on a support line or that trigger line area. And now you see I'm scanning in and I can't see that market anymore. Do you guys see that? You guys see that? I'm scanning in and I can't see the market anymore. Now you should understand when we're looking at trade, y'all probably looking at why should you call it trade? Now you know why. Now you know why, because I only take trades that are in alignment. I only take trades. I'm not gonna tell you to take a trade I wouldn't take. Some of you guys take a trade because you're still learning and you're still grasping it. But I'm never going to tell you to take a trade. I wouldn't take. If I tell you take, to take a trade, I'm taking it too. When we on these calls in the morning and I push, you push the button, I'm pushing the button. Anytime I said this is a good trade, let's watch this, let's do that. Let's, you know, if it passed here, then we get in. There. If I say take the trade, we all taking the trade. We're all in this together. You're not by yourself, okay? So when I look at this, and based on what we just saw, and if I don't say, oh, look, that means I'm not in the trade. So if I look here, right, and it comes right here, and then I come up here to my hour, okay, where's that other arrow at? So it looks like on this one, we would have had some confluence. So you can kind of see where you are in the market. Let me change the color of this one, make sure we're looking at the right one. Let's come up here to the hour, right? So we had confluence on here. So you guys would have been, at, and this is a trigger line. So it's not a psychological line. So you guys would have been able to take it. Now, looking at the four hour, I wouldn't have did more than 10 pips, okay? Looking at the four hour, I would never have done more than 10 pips. Not with this four hour moving because I know I'm trading a correction. So you see that? My hour setting up for that sale, Stochastic crossing down, hour right here, 15 minute, we already analyzed, right? 15 minute, we already know, we had the setup on my four hour is buying. So personally, my personal trade plan, right? I don't always say, you know, I'm a, I would scrutinize this so hard before I jumped in that trade because I wanna make sure, cause you don't know how far it's gonna come back. You don't know how far that pullback is. You don't know that right? You have absolutely no idea how far the market is going to pull back. So if the overall picture is in a sale and the current picture is in a buy, should you... So, okay. It's not about explaining what you should look for. You just answered your own question. I'm going to tell you how. If the overall picture of the market is in a sale, right? The overall picture of the market is in a sale. What is the market doing? What's the market doing? It's selling exactly, and if the you know if if so the overall picture is a sale right like what we're analyzing right now the overall picture is in the sale, but then you have an area that's in a buy. What is that called? Like right here, the overall picture it is right here is okay a pullback. What's another name for it? We got all kind of names. The overall picture of the market right here is in a buy. But th this is what you're asking, right? I got a counter trend trade. I got a correction. Absolutely. So if I'm right here, this is your question. The overall trend of the market, the overall movement of the market is in a buy. But your current condition is in a sale. I just flipped it because this is beautiful, right? You said sale, then buy. I'm saying buy, then sell. It's not a mixed market or indecisive. The market does not go in a straight line. We want the market to move in a straight line. Does your life move in a straight line? The market doesn't move in a straight line. If your life doesn't move in a straight line, that means the market makers don't move in a straight line. That means they get indecisive and got to hesitate questions, right? No, that's not consolidation. That's a correction. So this is how the market moves, right? This is how the market moves. Where's my thing at? Right here. The market moves like this. Impulse, correction, continuation, correction, continuation, correction, continuation. Anybody, what's that called? 
What's this called? An, an uptrend. Keep your mind, drop it in the chat. Um, what's what's this? Not an uptrend, but what what would this be called? It is an uptrend, but what is this pattern? What is this called? Anybody know what this is called? I think we're gonna have to do a part two on this. Does anybody know what this is called? Th thank you, an Elliott wave. Absolutely, this is an Elliott wave. So what happens is, you know, they don't normally look like this perfect. They're never this perfect. Well, obviously they are sometimes because this one is. This is beautiful. So this is just this is what we call an Elliott wave. The market is going to pull back. That's what your question is. What, so it's not what I'm looking for, it's what I'm recognizing. Shift your thought process. So it's not what I'm looking for, it's what I'm recognizing. I'm recognizing that the overall momentum of the market is in a box. However, there are times, right? However, there are times where the market is going to pull back. Now, where do those pullbacks happen? Where do they happen? Haha, <laughs> you moved from Facebook to um, YouTube. I love it. I see you. Um, yeah, it, and so they have the corrections happen exactly at the support and resistance lines. Why do you think I tell you guys your support and resistance lines are your lifeline? Your support and resistance lines are your lifeline period. And so right here is where that happens. So impulse, correction, continuation, correction, continuation, correction, continuation. And then once you stop making higher highs, right? So go back and watch that market structure, go in that market structure playlist. And there's some good videos for you to watch on the YouTube channel where it's talking about this, exactly what your questions are right now. So some, and go spend some time on the YouTube channel. We pull it, we use the tools, help you understand the market and how the tools play together so you can be a successful trader and stay in the academy, right? It's not gonna hurt you to go back into the academy, right? Definitely not. So now, all right? So as I'm looking at this, right? By, wow, bam, impulse, correction, continuation, correction, continuation, correction continuation right you see it so that's your question now as i'm looking over here all right the same thing is happening over here is just not as pretty that's why i just flipped it to the buy all right because it's not always gonna be as pretty but it's the same thing that's happening right here and so as i'm looking here and i got my support and resistance lines okay we have that you know and as i'm looking at this you can see where this is, you know, where it's moving down. And so what we're going to do next week, right? Because I don't want to rush this, all right? What we were able to do tonight was kind of help you see the big picture of the market, what that step three is, right? So, you know, that's what we're able to do tonight is really help you understand where that top-down approach comes from and what you're looking for, all right? And now what you have to know is how do I take this and evaluate the cash out, BYB cash out strategy and my entry point, right? That's what you have to be able to do because, and that's, that's where we're going, but I told you, I'm gonna go as fast or as slow as your questions, as your, as your understanding. So what that means is we're gonna, this is part one, that's what that means. And then we'll jump on next week for part two. So what we've done tonight, right? Once again, what we've done tonight is help you understand the big picture of where the market is. All right. For you to take this trigger, right? Look, we just triggered again on the 15th. We just, since we've been talking, it triggered again on the 15th for a sale. So if I'm on the 15th, right? Look at how this is pulling up. If you guys came in and took a trade here, then you know that the market is pulling back because my look at what's happening. That little correction thing. And you see what we already discussed on the hour. And so you'll see why, you know, this is beginning, you know, to what it's looking like it's trying to do. And we already know this is a four hour, but once again, we're oversold. Once again, 
if I kind of look right here, you see the rejection that's happening right there. And so we'll see how it plays out because there's absolutely no way I would even consider a trade for a sale until it breaks down here. Remember the vibrata does if this, then that. If this, then that. If this, then that. It doesn't do what you do from an analysis standpoint, okay? So big picture of the market, right? You have to squinch up the chart. You have to look at it. And we'll see how it played out. So it might be good we did a part two. We'll be able to see how this plays out from here, right? Where those triggers happen because we had triggers here. We've been looking at the same triggers for two weeks, right? <laughs> We've been looking at the same ones for two weeks. Matter of fact, that markup, no, I think it refreshed and made me log back in. But we still had the markups, right? These markups are still here. You see? Look at how long. When did we put this in? On Monday? What's today? Thursday? We are now, look at that, 40 pips up. That's just how the market was this week. But you see when I said it was still on a harmonic scanner? And we didn't take it off where it's at right now and the fact that it's moved up. So this is one of our three trades that we've been looking at, right? So now when I'm here and you can see what it looks like it would do. So we don't know what it's going to. I just know we're not taking a trade if it unless it bypasses this and you got to wait because it's going to correct somehow. Somehow because it's too oversold. And let me just see for my, my pivot people, because y'all are like, why you stop using pivots? Look at where we are. The pivot point now, the pivot point is the center point of the market. Right now, we're still talking about top-down analysis, big picture market structure. So we went from a clean chart to now we've painted a canvas, right? We got to, I know my pivot people are on this call. I know that. I know that. See, I love pivots. So I know. Pivot points are also on support and resistance lines, right? Pivot points are also on support and resistance lines. However, what a pivot point does is the pivot point helps you understand where the market has identified the center point of the market. That's why we dropped the pivots on there, right? So if I'm on a higher time frame, my pivot point, the market would typically go to an S1 or R1. We're already at the R1. On my lower time frame, I'm trying to help you center the market. On my lower time frame, we can go to S3 or R3. But it's we're already around that S1 on my higher time frame. So everything is indicating that we're not pushing through here. Oversold, pivot point, right? S1 on the pivot points. So many things going on as you advance this skill set, all right? And we didn't even get to psychological levels, okay? But you see the market, you see the market. So however you choose to put things on the chart, however, whatever tools you, you choose to utilize, whether it's pivots, whether it's psychological levels, whether it's both, regardless whether I come on here and I draw channels and all this other stuff, we look at where our high, higher highs and lower lows are, I need to know what's happening in the market. And then we'll drop down and take a trade. So part two, next week, next Thursday. Question, comments, testimonies, because it is definitely time to transition this call. <laughs> what I got, support and resistance lines, higher highs, lower lows, impulse, correction, Elio, continuation, Elio wave, pivots, absolutely. And, <laughs> and then there's some more stuff we can look at, right? So I'm telling you guys, for those of you all, who are new to this, take a deep breath. We're going to walk you through it. I promise you, it's not hard. It's just different. You know, if you can drive a car with the, with the gas, the brake, the, the, the um, gears, the steering wheel, 80 mile an hour cars on your left, your right, merging from lane to lane, doing cars coming at you. If you can do all of that, then higher highs and lower lows and corrections and Elliott waves and pivots is no big deal. There is no 80 miles an hour on this chart, all right? So with that being said, late, great training. Thank you. You are very, very welcome. So we'll pick it up next week, dive a little bit deeper, but I challenge all of you all. I'm challenging you. 
I'm challenging you all to go ahead and make sure that you rewatch this if need be. Watch the psychological levels again and watch this one again because next week we're gonna do a part two and I wanna make sure you guys understand what we're looking at and what we've done so far, okay? So, all right, so hold on.